Once again, happy Mother's Day to everyone present. Everyone present and those who are not present, if you get to watch this on the YouTube, God bless you and happy Mother's Day to you as well. We're coming from the book of Joshua. As were. We're coming from the book of Timothy. Because it's being a mother, hey, let me tell you, being a mother is a courageous thing. It ain't easy. It ain't easy. I don't think there's a mother that will tell you they had an easy time doing that job. That, hey, being a mother is not for cowards. Please rise to your feet in honor of God's word. We're coming from the book of 2 Timothy. The first chapter. Starting at the fifth verse, it's a wonderful verse, but it's a critical verse. That's Second Timothy, and and if you, if you have your new book, it's on page eight and nine to take notes on. If you have, say amen. If you need more time, say hold up, Pastor. All right, let's read. Go ahead and pop it up. <clears throat> and when, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that, that in thee also. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. Please be seated and pray with me now. Father, we just thank you once again for this day, Lord. A day that you have made and a day that we are glad to be in. We rejoice and we thank you for it, Lord. We exalt your holy name, Lord. We, we give you praise. But Lord, give me preaching power today to honor the, the, the mothers that you have blessed us with. Give me preaching power to show them the true appreciation and adoration that they so deserve. Father God, women are a true reflection of your glory and your love. Father God, they, they show everything that is wonderful and gentle about you. And Father God, they can even bring wrath as necessary like you do. So Father God, we just thank you right now for each and every mother that's present under the sound of my voice. But Lord, we pray for that unsaved mother. We pray for that mother who doesn't know you for salvation. That that she doesn't feel it robbery, but necessary to come down and give her life to Christ, to know you as her Savior, as her Lord. And we pray and give thanks for anyone else, man, boy, woman, girl, boy, or child, that wants to come down and give themselves to you, Father God. We just thank you now in advance for these and all blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Giving honor to God and the saints in Christ seated here before me. I'm going to lift that, keep that verse lifted up and just focus on the words. Unfeigned faith that dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. The unfeigned faith that dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. I like to speak from the thought this morning a faithful mother. A faithful mother. Turn and smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, oh my neighbor, what did you get me for Mother's Day? Brothers and sisters, all, all across America today, thousands of people are honoring mothers. We take the time to honor our mothers for their sacrifice and love that they have given to us. We remember how our mothers loved and cared for us, and today is the day we have set aside to honor all mothers, past and present, for being the great women that they are. Come on and clap it up for mothers. Come on, clap it up for mothers. 
And that's what we see here in today's text. Paul is reminding his spiritual son, Timothy, of his heritage, of his stock, of his pedigree. He's reminding him of where he comes from and where he's going in his faith. It is all based upon what has been done in the past and present that will affect his future. His faith in, say a sweet name with me. Somebody say Jesus. It all comes from two wonderful ladies. One named Lois and the other named Eunice. Look at the text. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which first dwelt in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I am persuaded that in thee also. This is where I'd like to give you three for the Trinity for the glory of God. My first point, we see a faithful mother's life. We see a faithful mother's life. We remember her and her genuine faith in Christ. We remember her and her genuine faith in Christ. Richard, we see a faithful mother's life. The scripture says, when I recall that first part, when I call, recall to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. Everyone just pause for one second and think about the time you saw your mother praying or reading scripture. I can recall to mind how my mother would start her day reading her Bible with her devotional book. She set the example of how to start your day with the word of God. You see, Sister Rachel, as a matter of fact, her devotional book was titled Daily Bread. The idea that you start your day with God's word feeding your spirit. Sister Sasha, as the Apostle Paul penned this letter to his spiritual son, Timothy, he was trying to reassure Timothy of his purpose, who he was and why he was in Ephesus as a pastor stationed there to preach the gospel. You see, Miss Yvonne, the first line of Scripture in verse 5 lets Timothy know, when I recall or call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, you have the faith in you already, son. That's what Paul was telling Timothy. Just keep on believing. Teresa, you see the faith that Timothy got came from his grandmother and his mother. He saw the example of faith. It was visible and it was active daily in the life of his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice. You see, Brother Dale, that's why Paul was able to remember this about Timothy. He recalled to mind these examples from him based upon his experience having met them. If you ever get a chance, you go to Acts chapter 14. During his missionary journey, these two women were converted and became faithful followers to Jesus. You see, the actions were consistent and they were always constantly revealed. And it was revealed again in Acts chapter 16 when Paul would once again visit them. Their faith did not waver. Their faith did not change, but increase. Proving themselves to be what? Unfeigned faith. Now, it was to be found also, that same faith also found in Timothy. That word meaning that is in thee, but look at the word unfeigned here in the text. Margie, let me explain this. It literally, in the Greek, it means to be unhypocritical, meaning not to be a hypocrite, not to be two-faced, not to be a liar, but to be found honest, true, legitimate, sincere, the real thing, genuine, meaning what was given, what was taken, displayed before the world was something that was genuine, not fake, or a show or a performance. In other words, Lois and Eunice didn't act like Christians only on Sunday. They acted like Christians Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All throughout their daily lives, they display godly behavior. The faith that Timothy had from his matriarchs was genuine. And that's why Paul could say, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee. 
mothers, I have to ask this question. Can your children, your children brag about your faith? How you are the real deal when it comes to being a Christian? Miss Minerva, is it true that when they say that my mother's a godly mother, or is it an act or a show for the world to see? Brothers and sisters, trust and believe one thing is true about our children. They see the real you at home and they will either follow you or retreat from your bad example or follow after that good example. You see, I'm convinced of one thing. When we live right and act right in front of our children, Brother Paul, while they are young, they will see a good foundation, a good example to follow. You see, Miss Rebecca, but when we don't live right, our children will most definitely follow our bad example. How do I know this? There's a whole book about it in the Bible called the Book of Judges. You see, Brother Jim, those parents in the book of Judges and their children were in a continuous cycle of sin, constantly repeating, constantly sinning, and they just didn't want to do what was right. They didn't want to follow God. But let's look at the text one more time. Look at the part that says, which first dwelt, which dwelt first in thy grandmother, Lois. And thy mother Eunice. We see my second point. We see a faithful mother's love. We see a faithful mother's love. She establishes a solid foundation of faith. And it sincerely resides there in her heart. We see a faithful mother's love. She establishes a solid foundation of faith. And it sincerely resides there in her heart. You see, Alex, the love of a mother is evidence in how your mother, Minerva, sacrifices. Gives of herself without questions. First for her children, her family, and then she takes care of herself. Unselfishly, every mother puts forth the best effort for their child. And they do it out of love. Mothers do whatever is necessary, giving 110% of their time and effort, Miss Sue. It comes from a beautiful place, their heart. You see, a mother's love, Miss Nancy, can be seen in how Lois and Eunice raised and influenced little Tim. They placed the importance of knowing Jesus as their Savior first in their lives. Look at the text. When I call the remembrance to unfeigned faith, meaning they had faith in Jesus Christ, where they dwelt first in their grandmother Lois and in Eunice. It was in them first. They set the precedence. They put the necessary need for foundation and faith in Jesus Christ. They believed first. And Timothy followed their example in their footsteps. Now, let's be clear about things. Timothy had a strong, sincere faith in Jesus, but it was influenced by his grandmother and his mother. This serves as a reminder of how important it is of a godly heritage is in a family. How do I know this? That they loved him. How do we know that? They taught him about Jesus. How do we know these things? About They teach them about love for Jesus and the scriptures. Well, Paul would later on remind Timothy in the second part of this um, chapter. He would go on in verse uh, chapter 3, verses 14 and 15 and say, But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them from. That's his grandmother and mother. But verse 15 goes on to say, And that you've learned from childhood, you have known the Holy Scriptures. Wait a minute. They've been teaching him since he was a little boy. And it goes on to say, Which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. You see, his grandmother and mother led him to faith in Jesus. And let's be honest. If we're not teaching our children how to love Jesus, if we're not teaching them how to love the Lord, the world will teach them other things to love. The world will lead them to do other things they shouldn't do. You see, one thing I know about children, they very rarely on their own, very rarely on their own, take the initiative to go learn something new. 
If we don't lead them, if we don't take them, if we don't expose them to the love of Jesus, let me be clear about it. The world will expose them to the hate of the devil. Amen? But these ladies love Tim. They love him enough to teach him the Holy Scriptures. I got a question for mothers today. Mothers, do you love your children enough to read the Bible to them? If you really love your children, will you teach them about Jesus? If you really love them, will you lead your children to Jesus? If you really love your family, will you bring them to church? Fathers, if you really love your family, you're the first one up in the morning leading them and driving your family to church. But that's a Father's Day sermon. I digress. Back to Mother's Day. Timothy had a solid foundation, Ms. Caroline, established in his grandmother and mother. They knew the Lord. You see, an example can also be found in Acts 16.1. When he came to Derby and Lystra, Paul saw a certain disciple named Timothy and a certain Jewish woman who believed, but his father was Greek. That's his pedigree. His mother was a Jewish convert. Timothy came to faith watching his mother's example. Eunice came to faith watching her mother lower his faith. How do we know this again? When I recall to mind the remembrance of unfeigned faith that is in thee which dwelt first in thy mother, grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. The faith first dwelt with Lois. There's the solid foundation. But it was found, look at where it resides, dwelt first. It was in grandmother. Mima, Momo, Jima, Granny. She had it first and then Eunice and passed on to little Timmy. Ladies, let me be clear about one thing. You are the duct tape. You are the glue, the rubber band, the paper clip, and the bubble gum that keeps families together. Now, I know you're saying, Pastor, that's a wild mixture. But let me explain. You see, duct tape, because nothing else will hold it together. It's strong enough to keep all things together. You see, glue is sticky. It fastens. And even if some of the glue comes off, there's always some still holding on. It doesn't let go easily. A rubber band. Rubber band because life situations, life circumstances, trouble stretch your patience, test your faith, expand your abilities. You have to be elastic enough to go far beyond what you were made to do. And you have done more than you thought you could do with the grace of God. But let's look at that paperclip pop. Paperclip because it holds things together that wouldn't normally be together. You hold your children, maybe a niece or a nephew. You hold a neighbor's kid or anyone else you picked up along the way as a mentor, Miss Jan. You may have to be a paperclip because here's why. It's made out of metal. And the thing is about a paperclip, it makes you tough. You bend a little, but you don't break. That's your strength. But lastly, you're like bubble gum. When things are really bad, you bring comfort. I don't know if anybody had the same had the same feeling with my mom. My mom would always take a piece of gum and just shove it here, boy. And then you chew on the gum, and it made you feel better. It made you feel better. Here's the thing about it. Bring that comfort. But here's the thing. When things are are sour, you're the sweet that makes it bearable. Amen, somebody. You're a mom. You are continually being godly influence on your family. Everyone around you. You see, Proverbs 31 talks about you. Proverbs 31 brags about you. Mom, watch what she does. Mom gets up while it is still night and provides food for her family. Mom said about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her task. Mom opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Mom speaks wisdom. We don't want to hear what mama got to say, but she's going to tell us anyway. Mom is always full of instruction. A good mother, a faithful mother watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. You see, that's a good mother. 
Constantly working, constantly loving, constantly caring, leading and caring for and providing for her family. Come on, let's give God some glory. Give God thanks for our moms. Come on, let them know, let them know. You got a mama, you better let them know they love. But let us review. My first point, we see a faithful mother's life. We see a faithful mother's life. Miss Brooke, we can remember her and her genuine faith in Christ. We see a faithful mother's love. Brother Kevin, she establishes a solid foundation of faith and it sincerely resides there in her heart. But Sister Trish, we see a faithful mother's legacy. Reagan, it persuades her children to believe and converts them. A faithful mother's legacy. It persuades her children to believe. You are the resident evangelist in your home, mothers. Miss Lorraine, you are the resident evangelist in your house. Look at the text. And I am persuaded that in thee also. Now, the word legacy means something handed down or received from an ancestor or a long lasting impact of events, actions that took place in the past that affect the future. Timothy's mother and grandmother's legacy is in him. They handed down a long lasting impact of actions of faith that affected his future. Look at the text again. I am persuaded that in thee also. Mothers, Miss Erica, if you want to have a lasting legacy, teach your children about Jesus. You want to persuade them. Live a Christ-like life daily in front of your children. This will, Miss Rebecca, persuade them that you that your life is the correct lifestyle to live. It will convert them to believe that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth. Jesus is the life. You see, Lois and Eunice's faith is in Timothy. His actions convinced Paul that he had real faith. It persuaded him. He believed Timothy's sincere faith so much so that he made him a pastor at the church of Ephesus. You see, Jan, Paul believed in Timothy's faith so much that he wrote two letters to encourage him, to inspire, to strengthen him, to increase his faith. Brothers and sisters, these same letters we use today for the same things for ourselves now. Amen? The thing about raising children is this. You only get one chance to get that right. We can't mess up on it. We get one chance. Yeah, I think the kids always tease me all the time. They toss something to me and I drop it and they always say, Daddy, you had one job. You had one job. And that was to catch it and I drop it or whatever. Well, parents, we got one job. That's to get it right, raising our children. We are commanded by God in Deuteronomy chapter 6 to diligently teach our children about the Lord, about Jesus. You have to start from the womb to the crib to the bedroom, to the classroom, to the kitchen table, to the back seat of the car. You've got to take every opportunity to teach your children about Jesus. But what if I miss that chance, Pastor Stewart? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. You've got grandchildren. And when you do get grandchildren, God has given you that second chance because they are your legacy. That little piece of cute DNA that's running around is evidence of your existence in this world. You can pass down a long lasting life experience of how Jesus has changed your life. You can be that living proof of the goodness of the Lord. You can shine on them the light of life, letting them know how Jesus loves them. But if you want to see those same grandkids, those great grandkids in heaven, you better be telling them that the wages of sin is death. You must be. You gotta be born again. And if you really want to see them in heaven, you better tell them that they need to confess the Lord Jesus and believe in their heart that God raised him from the dead. And if they believe that, they shall be. They will be saved. But here's the life application. How you live your life in front of your children is real. 
If you don't believe, where are they going to find the faith to believe? Brother Dale, you have to be, we all have been commanded by God and all mothers, you are the first evangelizer for your family. You will be the one spending majority of the time with that baby boy, with that baby girl. Not to say dads don't love them, but let's keep it real. Mamas, you the one that held them. Now you're going to keep holding them. You see, Miss Yvonne, what I know about Jesus is this. He loved his mother Mary. You see, Deb, we know this because while he was on the cross, he told the disciple John to take care of his mother. And John did that obediently. You see, Margie, how good a mother was Mary? She took her son to church. Several times in the gospel it says it was their custom to go from childhood to the temple. Meaning, when Jesus was younger, she took him to church. But Sister Stewart, we read this morning how much a mother influences her child. How her influence affects the whole family. You see, mothers, you are the first example of the love of God for your children. They look up from their little baby rocking them to your loving face. You're the first example of love. How God loves you, you love your child. Only what you do for Christ will last. If you live and love Jesus, your children will live and love Jesus. They know what it looks like from you, from your example. Lastly, mothers, if you love Jesus, then your children will see Jesus in you and want to know about him. But if you pass on your love for him, live your life for him, then your legacy for him will be passed down. The life you live, the love you give, the lasting legacy of faith in Jesus. A mother, a faithful mother, can that be seen in you? Can that be seen in you? It should be. A faithful mother. To God be the glory. Please rise to your feet.